So one heaped scoop of caffeine is 100, no, just over 300 milligrams of caffeine, sorry. So I've got one heaped scoop, so that's about 300 milligrams of caffeine. And then I've also got a rock star, so that is 150 milligrams of caffeine. So overall, that's probably just over 450 milligrams of caffeine, which is going to be the most I've had this whole training cycle. Um, but I do feel it's necessary. One thing I will be doing is the the, 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 the the week before my competition, so the kind of the deal a week before, I'm going to be cycling off caffeine. As a kind of general guideline, studies tend to suggest that to an appropriate kind of deload from caffeine is probably about four days of no consumption. So after four days of no consumption, you tend to, um, that is a kind of enough time to almost lose the resistance you have built up to caffeine and it tends to make you a lot more sensitive. This training session kicked off three weeks out from my powerlifting competition on the 19th of April and going into I knew it was going to be both physically and mentally very 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 tough this is kind of this is the really the last push on the overreaching uh, and this is trying to get just allow me to overreach as much as possible and i just knew it was not going to be easy whatsoever and that exactly how my body felt was a lie and that i just needed to get through the workload so today i was to do four sets of three with 90% on squats and then I was to move on to three doubles at 80% and the first set as you saw looked like an RP10, it just was incredibly difficult but I thought you know what, as long as I get through one set, so if I complete one set I'll be able to do another and once I get through that set I'll be able to do another and I would just keep repeating that process until I got through all four sets and that was the plan. And uh, it is extremely difficult and this week is pretty much going to be hell week. It is a very similar protocol to people like Garrett Blevins where the four triples at 90%, I know he implements that. I know Brandon Campbell also implements four triples as well and it just is very, very difficult but it's just something you need to get through and you just need to, you need to plough through it. Now, as each set progressed, in my opinion, I felt the, the bar actually moved better and better and because of that was I tried to get progressively more hyped per set so the first set was extremely calm and then the second set was a bit more hyped and I tried to do that because I knew that if I could get through the first set being calm then the second set I knew I could get through with just a little bit more hype and then come the third and the fourth I knew that I could really implement a lot of hype and by doing so I am definitely going to be able to finish the workload and looking back at the sets I am extremely happy that I got all of them I'm very very proud of myself that I got all of them um, especially with how kind of how, how, how physically and mentally it was tough however there's a few wee things I'm not happy with I'm not really happy with my depth I felt like in the third and the fourth set I was cutting depth and that isn't something I usually ever do I don't usually ever cut depth so I don't know why I was doing it but it's just something that I need to address and at the end of the day you always constantly strive for progression, not strive for perfection. Easy, Steve! Let's go! Come on! Get time! Yes! Come on! Easy! Two more! Oh, easy! Easy, see! Last one! Let's go! Up, 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 up! Yes! Good. Fuck you! Come on! Fuck you! After that, I was then obviously to go down to three doubles on 80%, which was 208 kilos, and then I was to move on to bench press for 
again, four triples at 90%. And one thing that I've been really, really noticing on my bench press is that going in with a much more concise and calmed approach tends to favour better for my bench press. So when I go for my deadlifts and my squats, I tend to find that being very, very aggressive and smelling ammonia and slapping myself or getting Robbie to slap me and just being overall very, very aggressive, it tends to really positively positively affect my my performance. Whereas on bench press, I feel that when I do do that, I tend to, to jump the gun and not follow through on my cues. So I tend not to properly pack my lats and properly brace and get the right hip drive and also get, my, get, get proper breath in. And I feel that by remaining more calm, it really allows me to go through my cues, implement my cues, and then by doing so, I feel that it allows me to perform better. Now, I still do obviously bring a certain amount of amped upness. I do t- I do get amped up, but I just don't get amped up as much as I tend to do on bench press and deadlifts. And I feel that that positively affects my performance on the bench press. And again, looking back at this bench press, extremely pumped and extremely happy that I got through it all. But again, feel that I was jumping the pauses a little bit. That does tend to be expected, especially under this kind of workload. However, again, just something I need to address in the future and be really focus on really making sure that I am not jumping the gun on my po- on my bench press and that I am properly hitting a solid competition pause as that is going to have the best carryover effect from going into a competition because especially when competing in the IPF or affiliations of the IPF, they are going to be strict with the with the the, the the pause in your chest and they're not just going to make it almost no pause that you tend to see in some federations. It's coming up for about 2 o'clock in the morning uh, and I'm just still wide awake. I'm really struggling to get to sleep. I really don't think I'm going to be able to get to sleep for a while as I am, I am just very, very emotionally excited for tomorrow for deadlifts. I am, it's just been playing on my head all day i am very nervous going in for tomorrow's workout as it is coming to crunch time and i am really really not wanting to miss any reps or any sets and i am so confident i'm going to do it but just very very nervous about getting in there and doing it and it, it, it almost feels like it's comp day tomorrow i mean that's genuinely kind of what's going through my mind and I just cannot wait to get into the gym and deadlift tomorrow. And I have just spent all of today doing recovery work. Like literally all of today, I have been feeling very beat up. My lower back and my glutes and my right leg have been extremely, extremely tight and slightly painful today actually and I mean it is expected from all of this overreaching uh, and it's just something that you kind of you have to you have to put up with I mean you're going to get little niggles and you're going to be tight you're going to be in pain and 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 and, and, uh, and have sore spots but you've just got to accept it and understand that you are doing this for a purpose and that purpose is greater than how you're feeling at this moment in time, once you get that into your head, it makes life so much easier and just do as much recovery work as you possibly can to allow yourself to keep going through the overreaching phase and I'm just so excited for tomorrow, I just cannot wait. I'm probably not going to vlog before deadlifts tomorrow as I'm probably just going to be too nervous to actually get in front of the camera tomorrow, but I will definitely vlog after it and you'll be seeing this video tomorrow, which will be deadlift day, so you'll be seeing deadlifts on Thursday. So that is the plan. I'm going to have a couple of pints of water just now, and I'm going to try and get to bed, get some good rest, and then it's time to kick some ass tomorrow with deadlifts.